Previously, we implemented our priority queue ADT using an unsorted doubly linked list. Now we want to implement it using a sorted linked list. You can also implement these things using sorted and unsorted arrays. I'm not going to show that in videos. I figure that you have more uh, experience implementing things with arrays. Uh, there is one significant consideration that we'll talk about a bit later uh, that deals with arrays and uh, um, making it efficient. So we previously wrote the unsorted LLPQ. This time we're going to write the sorted LLPQ. It will have a type argument of A and extend our priority queue type. We'll come back, we'll copy our priority queue methods and get rid of the comments. As with the unsorted version, we are going to implement this using a doubly linked list. Once again, it's because we are, in this case, we're not removing from random locations, we're inserting at random locations. But it's just easier if we use a doubly linked list as opposed to a singly linked list. The condition for is empty is the same. It's empty if ends next is end. The peak and the DQ in this implementation are actually both reasonably efficient. Peak is actually quite short. We're going to keep this linked list in sorted order by priority so that the head is always the highest priority element which means that all we have to do is give back the data of the head element which is ends next. DQ is also going to be fairly simple. It has to be a little bit longer than the peak because we have to remember this data that we're going to return. So I am going to create a value to store the value from peak and we'll give that back in the end. And after storing that value we need to link around the head element which is done simply as ends uh, ends next prev equals end and then ends next equals actually let's do this in terms of ret so or actually I can't do it in terms of ret so this is ends next, actually this needs this to be next, next prev. Uh, because ends next is the thing we're giving back. So I go to ends next, next. That is the node after the one that we're returning. And its previous should point back. And then ends next can be set to ends next next. There we go. Okay, so that's a DQ here. Um, note that all the methods we've written so far are all order one. I can just copy and paste and paste. The bottom two are remarkably obviously order one and even this one is just four lines of code, there's no loop, it's not repeating anything, doesn't matter how long the queue is, it's doing the same amount of work. NQ, on the other hand, is going to have to find the right place to put these values in, and then once it finds that location, it is going to uh, do an insert there. Okay, because the list is sorted, we can do this with a while loop. So we're going to make our rover, as we pretty much always do. And I'm going to make it so this rover starts at ends previous 
Okay, I'm going to start at the end of the list and the idea here is once again that if things are ties this will probably have a better chance of keeping it so that we get normal queue ordering but that isn't something that we're really like trying to absolutely preserve here. And then I need to walk backwards through the list. I want to keep going while the rover is not equal to end and I need to go while the value that we are adding is a higher priority than rover. So, well, we haven't put it in yet, but I'm going to add a higher P function. So we're going to keep going while A is a higher priority than rover's data. And we'll just set rover equals rover.prev. So we're walking backwards through the list. Let's go and let's copy our argument from the unsorted version. Whether we're sorted or unsorted, we still have to know a priority. So we're passing in this function, higher p, that tells us if one item is a higher priority than another item. When we're done with this, what is Rover going to point to? Well, Rover could point to the Sentinel, or it is going to point to the first element that has a higher priority than what we are adding in which means that what we're adding in needs to go after the rover okay so we set we're going to build a new node and I'm actually going to do this in two lines I'm going to set rovers next previous equal to the new node that stores the element we're adding. It should point to rover as the thing prior to it, and it is going to point to rover's next as the thing after it. And then we need to change rover's next to be rover's next previous, which is, since we set it here, this new node. Okay, so that does in two lines the linking in creates a new node, points it to the right locations, and sets our other two values to point to that new node. And there we go. So there is a sorted linked list priority queue. This method here is not order one. It's order n. Okay. And that's because it has this while loop now, but in this case, the while loop does not have to walk through the entire list, but on average, for most applications, it will walk halfway through the list. It turns out that if the elements that you're adding are generally of high priority, this will walk less than half the list. Okay, So this could be reasonably efficient if things are being added somewhat close to uh, sorted order, so that every time you get higher priority. You might think that's kind of weird. But imagine a priority queue that was based on time, where you had certain events that were happening in time. Well, that would be sort of, the high priority would be a small time, and low priority would be a larger time. But in that situation, when you take an element with a small time off, odds are the next event will actually have a fairly high priority. So it would not be unusual for the new events to go near the end of the linked list, and this might not be too bad of an implementation. Now, it's tempting to think that because two things were order in here, that this is definitely the, the slower option, but that really depends upon how often you call peak, okay? because the reality is most applications wind up in queuing a bunch of things and then dequeuing all the things that got in queued, in which case either way you have order in things that are you're going to take order one time and order in things that are going to take order in time whether it's because you have order in in queues or order in d queues, which means that on the whole, it's going to be order in squared okay, for most applications. If for some reason though, you were in queuing a lot more than you were de queuing, I can't think of an application where off the top of my head where I definitely really want to do that all that much. But if I were doing that, well then this implementation actually could be better because the in queue here is just order one and if the number of things that I'm dequeuing is not order in, uh, if it were order one, like I was always going to dequeue five things, no matter how much stuff 
I added, well then this would be a better implementation than doing all the work of enqueuing them. So there is, you have to think about the application that you're going to do, what methods are going to be used. For most applications, probably this sorted linked list priority queue is going to be better. Uh, just in general, and part of that's because this while loop only has to walk through half the collection, whereas these, the while loop for the find highest priority, priority always has to go through the entire thing. Uh, it's just like why an insertion sort is better than a bubble sort or a selection sort. But you do have to take into mind the application that you're writing, because it could be that for your application, this is not the more efficient operation uh, or way of, of storing these things. Just be aware of that. Uh, in fact, it's what the implementation we're going to do later with these things called heaps, for most applications, is far better than either one of these. But, once again, if you're always enqueuing things with a high priority, uh, it's possible that this could even beat the heap. Um, it's not likely, but depending upon the applications and details of the applications, different types of data structures can work better. That's actually another part of why you need to know how to write these things yourself. There is a built-in priority queue in the uh, Scala library, but it uses a heap. Most of the time, that binary heap is going to be a very good data structure for you. But if you have an application where it's not, you need to know enough so that you can write these things on your own.